So in this video, I'd like to introduce you to some of the concentrations of nerves that we find in our beautiful donor, the captain. So nerves are abundant in our body and they form nets. Now, a net of nerves we call a plexus. So a net of nerves of the autonomic nervous system, that's the part of your nor no nervous system that folks normally think is kind of out of your, out of your control. And there are many automatic processes in your body. So automatic processes, though we do definitely influence them and we can influence our autonomic nervous system. But it helped to know where it is and what it looks like, I think. So come on down and visit Captain here. He's very abstract and highly dissected. We're going to start up in his neck. So when we look at Captain's neck here, we can see that there's an extraordinary amount of white fibers dangling down here like dreadlocks practically. And and these all, we have cranial nerves, we have a plexus in our neck called the cervical plexus. That just means a neck plexus of nerves that are making our, uh, receiving the sensations from our skin and working with some of the muscles over the throat here. And then we have an enormous bundle of nerves here, right? This is called our brachial plexus, meaning our arm plexus. So these are the arm nerves, whole lot of energy coursing back and forth along these pathways from the arms. Now, right here, uh, we have the beginning of the trachea, actually, and here's where the thyroid gland used to live. The thyroid gland, it's been removed, but right next to it is a beautiful ganglion. Now, ganglion simply is a, is a fancy word for a bunch of nerve cell bodies. So here we have a bunch of nerve cell bodies making, making a bubble here and having many other nerves branching out of them. So, so this is a communication depot. It's like a little brain in your neck. And uh, it's nice to know where it is. So if you go to your Adam's apple here and just slide down a little bit, you'll be at your thyroid gland, slide a little sideways, and you're, you're, you have a place to focus your energy on and think about uh, the stellate ganglion here, next to your thyroid gland. What about this net? See, we said a plexus is a net. Doesn't this look like a net? It looks like a net because it is a net. Look at this incredible net of tissue. See if I can get it over my gloves here. You can see that it's a net of nerves. Here's a, a net that's so dense it turns into a clump. And this clump, we're going to say, is the deep cardiac plexus. And these are going to be the, the pulmonary plexuses. And this is all behind your heart. So we have our heart here. And look at the energy center be, behind your heart and present to your heart. Because it's not really behind your heart, it's connected to your heart, right? So we have branches connected to the removed heart here, our cardiac and pulmonary plexuses here in your chest. Now we're going to work our way down a little further, and now we're going to be in the abdominal region. And this first plexus I'm going to show you in the abdominal region, which also has a ganglion inside of it, right here. This is the celiac or solar plexus. What's it going to? This is the autonomic nerve tissue supply all around the celiac trunk. And the celiac trunk branches to the pancreas, to the liver, to the stomach, and to the spleen. So the solar plexus, as it were, is the autonomic supply to the big organs in the upper part of the abdomen. And immediately next to it, we have right here, and running all along the artery here, a very thick plexus of nerves and its ganglion, which we're going to call the superior mesenteric plexus because it's the upper mesenteric artery, the superior mesenteric artery, surrounded by nerves that are doing what? They're branching out all through the abdomen to the lo lower part, to the small intestines. So small intestines and part of your colon is serviced by this superior mesenteric plexus right next door neighbor to the celiac plexus servicing the upper organs of your abdomen. Here, it continues, of course, they're all continuous with each other through the, this intermesenteric plexus to what we call our inferior mesenteric plexus. Now look at this, we have the inferior mesenteric artery buried in these nerves. It's a huge plexus, where is it headed? It's headed into your deep pelvis, to your colon, to your rectum, it's headed to your bladder, it's headed to your intimate parts. Uh, and so this is kind of the lower 
nerve plexus and, and its ganglion that lives here. And as I, I'm going to lift it up and give an honorable mention to what's underneath it here, because there's a whole other layer of, of ganglia and nerve plexus is here. See if I can get under this and uh, spread it out a little bit. This is called the hypogastric plexus. So this is living right on your sacrum here. And there's also, I'm going to put that in the middle, along with the inferior mesenteric, and there's also here, like we had big nerves up in your arm, well, you got big nerves in your pelvis too. Look at them, they're huge, and they're going to form the sciatic nerve and the main nerve to your intimate zone. So here we have what we call our sacral plexus. So we have our sacral and hypogastric plexuses accompanying our inferior mesenteric plexus, which is based here, but servicing the deep pelvis. We have our superior mesenteric, which is based here and servicing the lower abdomen. We have our celiac or solar plexus, which is based here, but servicing all of the organs in the upper abdomen. We have our pulmonary and cardiac plexuses here, based behind the heart, but servicing the whole heart and lungs. And we have our stellate ganglion here next to the thyroid gland busy creating relationships throughout your neck uh, along with all of these beautiful nerves here. So that is quite a gaggle of nerves in the central core of our body, full of energy. You can bring your attention to them as you like and, uh, you know, shed a little love and light inside your form. Thanks, Captain.